So if you like most brands, you're working hard to increase your online visibility, reach the right audience and drive more traffic to your website. However, getting the prospect to your website is not enough. Once the prospect arrives at your website, what can make or break your conversion rate is how effective your website is at persuading the prospect to inquire. So sometimes that inquiry might be a phone call, but more often than not, a person who's looking to take the next step and get in touch with your business will need to fill out a contact form. And here's where the opportunity lies. So whichever way you look at it, whether it's an opt-in form to access a download, a lead capture form or a contact form, the task of filling out the form is a barrier to the person looking to make contact with your business. So today I'm going to go through four best practices to improve the conversion rate of the forms on your website. So the first one is the more fields that you have in your form, the less people are going to fill it in. So as a general rule, only include fields for what you really need. And I stress the word need because needing a piece of data for marketing isn't really a need. You can acquire that data later. By asking for more information at, at this stage, at the point of them filling out the form, means less people are going to fill it in and fewer leads in your business. Now the trade-off with this is usually quantity versus quality. So if you've got certain qualifying criteria and you're finding that you've got a high number of marketing qualified leads, but a low number of sales qualified leads, you might want to test adding fields to the form with the objective of improving the number of sales qualified leads in the business. Okay, so point number two, order the fields in the form logically. So start with easier fields earlier on in the form, like name, basic personal details, and leave higher friction items, such as payment details, towards the end. The psychology behind this is that once people start a task, i.e. filling out the form, and the further along they are in completing that task, the more likely they are to finish it. Therefore, if you start with the easier, lower friction items, more people are going to start filling out the form, and because they've started filling out the form, they're more likely to complete the higher friction fields later rather than drop off. Bonus point to consider is asking someone for their date of birth, uh, which you'd usually include higher up in the form in personal details. Um, that can actually be a higher friction point, so something to bear in mind. Okay, point number three. On longer uh, forms that you're asking people to complete, group certain categories of items of fields together. So this makes the form less intimidating and it'll entice more people to fill it out. So visitor behaviour before they start filling out the form usually involves them scanning the form to get a feel for the expectations and requirements from themselves. So if they scan the form and they see a, a, a big long list of fields, it's a lot more intimidating when they're, they're doing the expectation setting versus a form which has uh, nicely grouped sections of similar fields together. Okay, point number four. Don't put the name of the field inside the field entry box. Why? Because people have got a short-term memory uh, when it comes to filling out these forms and quite often they'll start second-guessing themselves. If the name of the field is inside the data entry box, as soon as people start typing, the name of the field vanishes. Then if people forget then if and start second-guessing themselves if they're entering the right information, they have to delete what they've just typed in so that the field name reappears and then ent start entering the information again. So this increases friction and it's even worse on a mobile device when it takes people longer and more effort to complete the form. So this increase in friction usually means a decrease in the number of people who are going to fill out the form. Now, one caveat, as always, there are exceptions to these rules. So you might find that you're it, and by testing, you might see that field names inside the data entry box um, actually perform higher. But as a general rule, it's probably better to keep the field name separate to the data entry box. So, bonus question. Which is better? Single form, multi-step form, or accordion form? Okay, sorry to disappoint. Uh, there is no definitive answer to this question. A couple points of consideration though. If you use a multi-step form versus one longer form and you start with their email address followed by a couple uh, low friction uh, items like personal details on the next step, even if they stop filling out the form after steps one and two, uh, you've still got their email address and maybe some basic personal details so you can follow up with them to try and get them to come back and complete the form. 
Also, if your form is, is quite a long form and it, it, all the fields are necessary and, and required, a multi-step form will probably give you a better result than one huge long form. If your form is long, give them the option to save part way through so that they can pause, take a break if something comes up in their life, come back later and complete the form without having to start the whole process again. So that wraps up today's video. If you're looking to increase the number of inquiries in your business, you might want to look at running some tests on your contact form as opposed to pushing for more traffic. A winning test is going to result in you increasing the number of inquiries with your current traffic levels, which means that any further investment in driving more traffic should result in a higher return. So as always, if you've got any questions about anything in this video, feel free to reach out to us at any time. And if you'd like to see us cover any specific topics, also feel free, we're always open to suggestions, so feel free to, uh, to let us know. If you want to be notified when the next video is available, subscribe to the YouTube channel and enjoy the rest of your day.